Hello and welcome to STQB Foundation Level Syllabus. And we are continuing with chapter number 1 that is Fundamentals of Testing. In this lecture we are going to cover third topic that is the 7 testing principles. So let's see what are the 7 testing principles. So now we will start with the first principle. The first principle states Testing shows the presence of defects, not their absence. Let's understand this point. So, testing can show that the defects are present. Okay, when you are doing testing, what you can show is that there are defects which are present in the software. But, what you cannot do is that you cannot prove that there are no defects. Okay. So, when we do testing, what we actually do is, we reduce the probability of undiscovered defects. When we perform testing, what we actually do is, we reduce the probability of undiscovered defects. Let's understand this with the help of an example. Suppose, in the software, you have 20 defects. Okay. Now, you perform testing and you found 5 defects out of it. What does that mean? There are 15 defects which are still there in the system. That is why testing can show that defects are present. So if we find 5 defects, we can say that yes, 5 defects are present in the software. That means we are showing that the defects are present. But what we cannot do is that we cannot prove that there are no defects because we could not found this 15 defects does not mean that they are not present in the software. So testing can show the presence of defect but cannot prove that there are no defects. And finally, when we perform testing, what we actually do is we reduce the probability of undiscovered defects. So if we would not have performed the testing activity, then all 20 defects were present in the software. But we reduced it. We found 5 defects. That means now only 15 defects are present. So this is all about the first principle. Now let's move to the second principle. Second principle states, exhaustive testing is impossible. Be very careful in exam. What they do is they just give exhaustive testing. Exhaustive testing is not the principle. Exhaustive testing is impossible is the principle. Let's understand what is the meaning of it. Testing everything is not feasible. Okay. So this is the first point. Testing everything is not feasible. Then, risk analysis, test techniques and priorities. So when we perform testing, we have to consider all these things. Based on the risk, we have to perform testing. Based on the technique which we are using, we have to perform testing. Based on the priorities, we have to do testing. We will understand uh, the meaning. And then, we have to focus on the test effort. If we get a software, that does not mean that we have to test each and everything in it. We have to see how much effort that will take. Okay. To understand these three points, let's understand, uh, let's see an example. Suppose this is the example, LED shall glow when speed is between 15 and 90 km per hour. Okay, so there is an LED which will glow when, when the speed is between 15 and 90 km per hour. So this is the requirement which we have to test. To test this, what we have to do is, we can use a testing technique. So we saw right, three points like priorities, testing technique or risk based testing we can perform. So this is a technique. This, this technique is called boundary value analysis which we will cover in chapter number 4. So right now what I want to tell you here is to test this requirement we don't have to test all the values. What I mean by that is in the requirement they are telling between 15 and 90 the LED shall glow. So what we can do is we can take 15, we can take 90 and then we can take the boundary values. For example, 14, 15 and 16. So, at 14, the LED will not glow. 15, the LED will glow. 16, the LED will glow. 
89 also the LED will glow because it is between 15 and 90. 90 also LED will glow or at 91 the LED will not glow. So just by testing 6 values we can say that okay the conditions are right. Instead of that we can also use infinite values over here like we can start from 0 and we can continue. But that is not required that will take a lot of effort just with 6 values when we can test why we should go for the different values. So that's why we have to, we have to take the appropriate technique or we have to take the appropriate approach so that we can reduce the effort. So that should be the consideration. So that is all about the second principle that exhaustive testing is impossible. Moving further, principle number three. Early testing saves time and money. This principle is also very very important that early testing saves time and money. So what we say here is static and dynamic test activities should be started as early as possible. For an example we saw this diagram before that first we have a user requirement then global design and then the implementation. So when we are at the user requirement or system requirement stage that time we don't have the code. That does not mean that we cannot perform any type of testing. We can perform static testing reviews on the requirement. When we do that what are we actually doing? We are starting our testing activity as early as possible. As soon as we have the requirement we start testing on uh, testing the requirement. Okay. And when we have the code at the implementation level, we start with the dynamic testing. So as early as possible, we are introducing the testing techniques. So that is what is the first point. Second point, early testing is sometimes referred to as shift left. Why? If you see this diagram, if you have to perform early testing, you have to go towards left of your flowchart. So if you start testing here, that means you, are, you have shifted left. So that is the meaning early testing is sometimes referred to as shift left. And then the last point, it helps reduce or eliminate costly changes. We will understand this point with the help of a, a graph. So this is a very popular graph uh, for testing. It is uh, uh, about cost and time factor. So cost of the defect, how can we predict? So you can see all the stages here, the requirement stage, the design stage, the build stage, the testing stage and the live use. Live use means when the customer is actually using the product. So if you find the defect at this point, you can see that the cost of finding defect is very very less. Whereas if you find it in the design stage or in the build stage then the cost is increasing. Whereas if you find it at the test stage or if you are finding it in the live use then the cost will increase exponentially. So what we can conclude is cost of finding and fixing defect increases over time. So the more you delay the more costly it's going to be. Okay so we already saw that uh, this diagram. So suppose there was a defect which is present in the system requirement level but we missed it we didn't perform any testing on it what we did is we moved to the next stage and the same defect because of defect in the requirement now the design is wrong since design is wrong now the implementation is also wrong so what is happening now if you find the defect at this point what will happen you have to correct implementation stage then you have to correct the design stage and then you have to come correct the requirement so what actually happening here is the fault is multiplying. Now the three documents or four documents are wrong since you didn't perform testing at the very early stage. So this is a very important aspect to test as early as possible. So we should start testing as early as possible. Moving to the fourth principle. Defect clusters together. Okay, this is also very important uh, principle and I have seen a lot of questions asked uh, based on this particular principle. Let's understand what does that mean. A small module, a small number of modules contain most of the defect. 
so if you have a very big system we should not neglect the small modules there is a possibility that the small module is interacting with many other modules and if there is a defect in a small module it may impact the complete system so we cannot neglect just by saying that okay this is a small module and we no need to perform testing on it so this is what this uh, principle is trying to address this point defect clusters together so a small number of modules contain most of the defects next so as i said responsible for most of the operational failures okay the small module can or may result in a operational failure also and then the last point helps reduce or eliminate costly changes so if you find defect in these small small modules uh, and then you can reduce or eliminate the costly changes because if you don't find them they will be found in the operational when the, the when the product is in operational use and we already have seen the graph if we find anything during the live use the cost will increase and we can reduce that cost reduce that cost by giving equal importance to all the modules so this is all about the defect clusters together now let's move to principle number 5 here be aware of pesticide paradox what is the meaning of pesticide paradox let's understand that this principle is also very very important be aware of pesticide paradox same test no longer find defects if you have a software which is ready you perform testing first time you found some defects but if you run the same test again second time third time fourth time fifth time you are not going to find any new defect until and unless there is a change in the software okay so how we can address that so to detect new defects existing test and test data may need change if the software is constant there is no modification happening on the const, uh, on the software level then if we want to find that defect then we have to update our test cases if we have to write new test cases then only we will find the new defects last point this is very helpful this uh, pesticide paradox principle is very helpful in case of automated regression testing so if you are if you are performing a automated regression testing that time it is very very helpful how so this is what they have written is very beneficial so we will understand this with the help of an example again suppose there is a software in which you have 20 defects what you did is you ran the script for first time you found five, some defects now the defect is reduced so suppose you found five defects so now the number of defect is reduced if you run this test case without modifying if you run this test case for the second time third third time or for the fourth time you are not going to find any defects any new defects because the software is same you have already run the test cases if you have run it efficiently properly then you will find all the defects which you should have found in the first run itself then in the second run and third run you are not going to find any new defects so same test test no longer will find the new defects if you want to find the new defects then to detect new defects existing test and test data may need change you have to change your test case then only you are going to find these remaining defects so this is all about fifth principle pesticide paradox now let's move to the sixth principle this one is quite simple testing is context dependent what does that mean so safety critical industrial control software is tested differently from an e-commerce uh, e mobile application so if it is a safety related system for example the medical instruments the avionics software we have to test them differently compared to an e-commerce mobile application or web application or if it is a safety uh, related or security related for example uh, banking software we have to test them differently the approach is going to be different because we have to address different issues at for the different pro, uh, products so we cannot perform same type of testing or we cannot use the same approach for all the products so we have to see the context of that product because for avionics safety is the concern and for banking domain security is the concern for e-commerce load is the concern 
low testing stress testing is the concern so based on that we have to perform the testing that's why we say testing is context dependent similar to that testing in an agile project is done differently than testing in a sequential development model or life cycle model so there are different models which we are going to cover in chapter number 2 agile model and sequential life cycle development model uh, based on what model you select your testing approach will change and last point we covered that if you are testing for e-commerce the testing is going to be different compared to the all other uh, products now coming to the last principle that is principle number 7 absence of error is a fallacy what we are saying is there is no error in the software that is a fallacy that is a wrong statement mistaken statement and we have already seen that so what organization expects from a tester organization accepts expects that tester can run all possible tests and find all possible defects this is the expectation of the organization or manager that we find all the possible defects but we already saw from the principle 2 and principle number 1 respectively that tells us that this is impossible exhaustive testing is impossible saying that there is no defect in the software is a false statement further it is a falsity that means it is a mistaken belief if someone is believing that that when we perform testing everything will be found means all the defects will be found or detected then that is a mistaken belief and the last point for example thoroughly testing all specified requirements and fixing all defects found could still produce a system that is difficult to use okay with this all the several principles are done now let's summarize all the points and you try to remember them now memorize them seven testing principles are there testing shows the presence of defect not their absence okay testing shows the presence of defect not their absence exhaustive testing is impossible early testing saves time and money defect clusters together be aware of pesticide paradox testing is context dependent absence of error is a fallacy mistaken belief so these are the seven principles please remember them because we are going to start with the quiz now so you can pause the video and have a look into it now as a result of risk analysis, so we did a risk analysis, more testing is being directed to those areas of the system under test where initial testing found more defects. So what we are doing here is we are directing more testing to the area where we found more mistakes than the average one. Which of the following testing principle is being applied? So which of the principle we will apply here? So first understand the question what they are telling is there was an area in the software where we found lot of defect. Now we want to direct testing to that particular area. And now we have to find out which of the testing is more appropriate to put there. Be aware of pesticide. This is not the case because we are finding the issues over there. So there is no point that we are running the same test cases again and again. So we, have, we are identifying the area in the software, not in the test case. Testing is context dependent, so it's the same context, same product you are using and the only the area of uh, defect is uh, or area of uh, the module is different now. Absence of error is a falsy, we are not saying that, that uh, there will be no error in the system. Defect clusters together is the answer because defect is clustering in one particular area, we are finding lots of defect in that area. That means defect is clustering in that area. That's why option D is the answer over here defect clusters together so next a product owner says that your role as a tester on an agile team is to catch all the bugs before the end of each iteration so before we complete all the iterations what uh, the product owner is expecting from you is that you find all the bugs which of the following is a testing principle that could be used to respond to this statement 
Defect clustering? No, defect clustering has nothing to do with it because the product owner is asking you to find all the bugs. Testing shows the presence of defect. Okay, absence of error is a fallacy that there will be no error is a mistaken belief. Root cause analysis. So root cause analysis is not the uh, principle. The correct answer over here is testing shows the presence of defect because here they're telling to find all the bugs that is not the case testing only shows the presence of the defect you may get confused with c uh, but here option b is the answer testing shows the presence of the defect not it does not tell that that there will we will find all the bugs so this is the principle which covers that okay next one so this is also a scenario based question which was asked in the exam so please uh, go through it once so Mr. Test has been testing software application on mobile device. So we are testing a software application on the mobile device for a period of five years. He has a wealth of experience in testing mobile application and achieves better results in a shorter time than others. Over several months, Mr. Test did not modify the existing automated tests. So this line is very important. Over several months, Mr. Test did not modify the existing automated test cases and did not create any new test cases. This lead to fewer and fewer de uh, uh, defects being found. So defects being found. Fewer defects being found by executing the test. What principle of testing Mr. Did not observe? So this is quite simple. Uh, he has a automated test cases but he is running the same test cases again and again and not modifying it because of which he is not finding the new defect. So testing depends on the environment. This is not the answer. Exhaustive testing is impossible. This is also not the answer. Repeating of test will not find new defects. So C is the answer over here. So this is how you have to analyze with some line you have to relate to the testing principles. Moving further. Which of the following statement best describes one of the seven key principles of testing? Which of the following statements best describes one of the seven key principles of software testing? So now we have to read through the options. By using automated testing, it is possible to test everything. Okay. With sufficient effort and tool support, exhaustive testing is feasible for all softwares. It is normally impossible to test all input combinations for the software. Yes, it is normally impossible. This is what exhaustive testing tells us. That is the principle. So option C is the answer that it is normally impossible to test all the input and output combinations for a software system. The purpose of testing is to demonstrate the absence of defect. No, this is not the purpose. So option D is also not the answer. Moving further, the most important thing about early test design is that so early test design that means we want to perform early testing so what it uh, how it can help us make test preparation easier means inspection are not required oh if they are saying if we do early testing or early test design then inspection is not required completely false can prevent fault multiplication yes if you test at the requirement level then you can avoid the fault multiplication to the respective stages. So that is why option C is the answer. And the last option will find all the faults. Obviously, this is a fault statement, false statement. We cannot find all the faults, which is clear by now. Which of the following characteristics characterize the cost of failures or faults? They are cheaper to find in the early development phase and most expensive to fix in the latest test phase. Okay, this looks like the answer. They are easiest to find during system testing but most expensive to fix then. Oh, this is the answer then. What they are telling is during system testing because we watch the behavior, we observe the behavior. Observing behavior is much, much easier. Okay, so if you they are easiest to find during the system testing, yes, but most expensive to fix because you are at the system testing level. And if you find any defect that time, it is expensive, it's going to be expensive. See, faults are cheapest to find in the early development phase, but are most expensive to fix then. No, 
early stages if you find yes it is cheaper but it is not expensive to fix them it is also easy to fix them it allows testers to become involved early in the project so this is a very generic statement option b is the answer they are easiest to find during system testing as i said because you watch the behavior of the system that time but are most expensive to fix then because the defect in the system testing is not because of the software only it could be because of the requirement then all the faces you have to change next one the later in the development life cycle a fault is discovered the most more expensive it is to fix why so the late you find the defect why it is more expensive that documentation is poor so it takes longer to find out what the software is doing uh, wages are rising the fault has been built into more documentation code test etc none of the above c fault is multiplying so this is the other way of telling that fault has been built into more document that is the meaning of fault multiplication so answer is c okay next one the cost of fixing a fault is not important it is really important because if you fix the defect towards the end or the live use it's going to be a costly affair b increases as we move the product towards live use yes so we have already seen as we move towards the live use the cost uh, will increase decrease as we move towards the live use no is more expensive if we find in the requirement of the no during the requirement if you find it is more easy to fix so answer is going to be b okay let's see the another question okay in foundation level syllabus you will find the main basic principles of testing yes which of the following sentence describe one of these basic principles okay complete testing of software is attainable if you have enough resource and test tool okay which automated testing you can make statements uh, with more confidence about the quality of the product then using manual testing or oh, they are telling if you are using automation testing they can then you can achieve the more quality than when you are using the manual testing so this we cannot generalize for a software uh, system it is not feasible under normal condition to test all input and output condition they are referring to exhaustive testing so answer is c because it is referring to the exhaustive testing principle a goal of testing is to show that software is defect free this is not the goal which is not a testing principle just try to answer this question early testing defect clustering pesticide paradox exhaustive testing so i already answered this when i was explaining exhaustive testing is not the principle exhaustive testing is impossible is the principle answer is d most of the time people go wrong in this question okay so i think this is the last question uh, from this topic seven testing of principle a team's test strategy was to invest equal effort in testing each of the system modules so uh, there is a team which was which is equally treating all the modules after running one test cycle it turned out that most of the critical bugs were detected in one of the system module so what they are doing they are clustering the defects in one small module which of the testing principle suggest a change to the current test strategy for the next test cycle so the answer is clear defect clustering right so option is a we have already seen the concept so with this what we did is so this is the same question okay so with this we covered the third topic that is seven testing principles so until now we covered what is testing why is testing necessary and seven testing principle in the next lecture we are going to see the test process which is also a very important topic and you will definitely get one marks from this topic